Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney and today we are answering a question for a longtime viewer of the channel uh, without getting into any specifics, any uh, identifying characteristics of any kind. This individual has an ongoing um, failure to accommodate case. I think it's pending in the EEOC or at least we hope it's pending in the EEOC, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission and uh, she is working with a local attorney, local counsel, uh, where she lives, where she is in the, in the US. And it's not going great. Communication with local counsel is kind of poor. Local counsel is not very responsive, um, not getting back, not returning phone calls, not providing things like proof of filing, not having things like a uh, written retainer agreement, right? A lot of red flags are popping up here um, making, you know, just kind of raising concerns, things that I would think an employment attorney, um, with any experience would not be engaged in, right? Um, we need to do better, right? If this is an actual employment attorney or an experienced employment attorney, then, um, I would say, bro, you got to do better. Like this is, none of this is okay. You're not, providing service, you're not communicating well, you're not aggressively and forcefully uh, pushing this case forward, um, you're not communicating with the client, you're not explaining the why, you're not providing proof of what you've done. There's a lot of problems here, okay? And she's finally reached the conclusion, I think, I, you know, I really like this attorney at the start, but it's not going well. I need, probably need to get a new attorney, right? And her first concern, I think, was, you know, well, what happens if I uh, if I fire this attorney and I don't and I don't find a new one I like? To which I said, um, why don't you interview ten attorneys before you fire the attorney? See if you like any of them. You just get free consultations with all five or all ten of those attorneys. If you find someone you like and you can hammer out a deal, say great, thank you for that deal. I'm going to be in touch shortly, you know, in about seventy two hours, and then go deal with your prior your your prior attorney or your current attorney, I guess before right before you go you enter in this new deal and the uh, advantage there is you've you've got a sure thing to hop to you're not just firing your attorney and the hope she'll find another you already know where you're going who your next attorney will be and now you're getting rid of your old attorney who's who's not doing the things that you think that attorney needs to be doing and her question was well how do I go about that how do I have that conversation with this attorney that I think it's time that we end representation? And I think that's a really good question because in this field, attorneys are often going to be a little bit aggressive about the end of representation because of course they've spent a lot of time and a lot of money on your case and they're not generally going to get paid unless they win you something. So if you're jumping from attorney to attorney, the attorney you're leaving is going to say, I'm going to have a lien against you. You're going to owe me money when this case gets settled. I don't care what you pay the new person, but I'm going to collect, right? So it's different in every jurisdiction and I'm not allowed to speak to other jurisdictions as to the ethical rules or the legal rules governing liens and, you know, retainers and contingency retainers and all these things. But I can tell you in New York, if you want to break a contingent retainer, it is going to help you a great deal if you can identify failures of the attorney, right? Um, I'll give you an example, right? If you want to fire your attorney because your attorney's got a percentage of your case and you, you write to that attorney, you don't respond to my emails inside two hours, so I'm firing you and I no longer owe you your percentage. I would think it's very unlikely that courts and or, or fee arbitrators in New York State are going to let you out of that contingent retainer. They're, they're probably going to help your, your attorney collect, right? On the other hand, if you say, hey, um, you won't, you've refused to provide me proof of filing for months. Uh, we have no retainer agreement in writing, which I think is required, and that's very concerning to me and you don't return my phone calls ever, you don't answer my questions, and I have documented efforts to try to contact you, and you're not getting back to me, well, that you have a much better chance of not paying that attorney, right? And the best chance of all 
something like, hey, you missed one of the filing dates in my case. That, that's probably malpractice. It probably impacts my rights. And on top of that, you're not communicating with me. You're not getting back to me. You're not responding when I reach out to you. And we, again, don't have a written retainer agreement. All of these things are very concerning. And many, many, many employment attorneys say these are red flags that might make you worry about the quality representation you're receiving, right? And get that in writing. And you might feel like you need to have a conversation. You owe this person a conversation. I would say you probably don't. But that being said, get it in writing first. Get it on paper and then save that paper because you may later need it at a fee arbitration or at a court case because your attorney that you're firing may still try to collect their fee, right? And they just may not agree with you. They might say, no, we did great. And calling you back once every two weeks is perfectly fine. And just to be clear, I don't believe any of this. I'm just saying this is what they might say. I've actually heard attorneys be like, well, we're plaintiff's attorneys. We don't call our clients back right away. Okay, that doesn't sound great. How often do you call them back? Usually about every two weeks. Yeah, I gotta tell you, my family, it was your client. You're not calling them back. You know, we have a 24 hour callback guarantee at our firm. If you're, if you're waiting two weeks to call my family member back, eh, no, no, we're finding a different attorney, right? That's, that's nonsense to me. Um, and I'm, I'm ranting, but, but I, I would probably get everything in writing and move it forward that way. If you then feel you need to have a conversation, fine, have a conversation. Just be aware, like the attorney, you know, they're not, they're not going to agree with you, probably. Because if they agree with you, they're going to lose money, right? If you have a valuable case and they're handling it and they have a percentage of your case, they're not going to be thrilled when you say, hey, I want to fire you and I don't want to pay you your percentage. They're going to have hours and resources invested in your case and they're going to want their fee. So there's going to be tension there. There's going to be some conflict. Um, but how do you get everything in writing? That is really how I'd go about it. I wouldn't even have the conversation, right? It's not like um, you're not you're not high school sweethearts. We don't need to break up in person, right? It's this is business. This attorney didn't do what they were supposed to do, in my opinion, based on just what we're seeing. Seems like they may not have done what they're supposed to do, and that is how I would address the conversation. Have a list of what they didn't do, a list of how they failed you, and often that will be very useful at least in New York State, and every state's different, so I can't advise you to your state, but in New York State, that would be very, very valuable when approaching a fee dispute or a court case over a, a lien on a case, right? Um, so anyways, I hope this is helpful. I wish you the best. I, I really do want you to get paid here. I want you to win. And um, I am still and always have been rooting for you. Like and subscribe if you feel like this was helpful. It does help me to help more people just like you.